What are the laws now? Are they strong enough? And if you could change them, how far would we go to change them? Wow, that is a good question. Thank you. <laughs> so, like, uh, we deal a lot with child pornography, online solicitation. I would love online solicitation to be even higher charged than it is already, of course, because sometimes we feel like this is a victimless crime if we're the ones working the case. But you got to understand that these perpetrators, if they are willing to meet us, they've met other people before. I, I guarantee it. Sometimes these guys are so brazen that they show up in like five minutes. It's because they've done it before and gotten away with it. I, I, I promise you that's what's going on. And sometimes we even get them to confess that that's what's going on. And so those people, I, I feel like it's a felony, but it should be a way higher degree as well. Can you, can you give me just one question? Oh, sure. Okay, right, don't, right. Don't, don't go away, but we've been trying to grab Sorry. you. Okay, this is my question. It's real simple, and I basically asked him the same thing. I don't know exactly um, what the what the um, laws, the limits of, of penalty are, but how far do you want to take them, and how do we help to ensure that our voice is heard to support your doing that? Well, I think we need to do a couple things. Uh, take down these websites, which Congress acted on, but I think we need stiffer penalties in the Congress. Uh, and let's go after the perpetrator of these crimes, the people that exploit the children, not the children themselves. They're the victim, and I think uh, the more uh, we get the word out that we're going to go after you and we're going to put you behind bars for a very long time, that's how you deter future child exploitation. And I was a prosecutor for many years. I started the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force in the Attorney General's office, and if we don't go after them, they're going to continue to do this. It's exactly what I think, and I'm listening to Kelly say something. I'll burn your house. Listen, I'll go after him with a baseball bat. Don't touch my child. Don't touch my grandchild. That's right. But my, my, my question ultimately is, Trump said, you know, if you do something to a child, you go to prison for life. I mean, how far can we go before they, before they, when they actually are deterred? Well, that's why we're looking at stiffer penalties, but I can tell you when they do get in the prison system, they're, they're treated as the lowest of the low. They're really scum, and they are at the bottom of the food chain in prison. So you get some satisfaction from that. The problem is they're not spending enough time in prison, or they get out on probation or parole. And um, I think a, a stronger message of deterrence through yeah, stiffer you know, jail time sentences. And you know, the prosecutors have to go after this. You know, the district attorneys, and US, they need to make this a priority because it, it's a priority for the moms and dads but it needs to be a priority for the prosecutors too. All right, so you just hit a very good point, and that is, are they are they going far enough or are they letting it slide because their workload is an overload? I think the, these uh, strip bars and they're underage to the massage parlors, they're not going after that as strong as they can and should. And I think there's, a, there's a, an awakening in this country that we got a real epidemic and a real problem when our children are being stolen like Kelly's story, it's stolen out of KDISD, for God's sakes. I mean, like I said, if it can happen in Katy, it can happen anywhere in the United States. If it can happen in their family. She had a ministry for years helping children navigate adolescence by mm. not doing something that they would regret. And then here, it, it, it was like the ultimate God gave the mission to her yeah. because she's equipped. But the teachers have to spot this. They have to report mm -hmm. it to law enforcement. The school board members can't turn a blind eye because they don't want a stain on their school. If it's happening, the first step is to admit it's a problem mm -hmm. before you can recover from the problem. So I think uh, whether it's Katie or any other school district, they got to admit they have a problem uh, to fix it.